is electric really an advantage from a cost perspective right and uh, if yes how long will it take for the product right because you come from a manufacturing standpoint to be cost neutral with respect to an ic vehicle without the subsidy being sought from the government Hi, uh, my name is Raja. I'm from Gaia Motorworks uh, Private Limited. We are into electric uh, three-wheelers, uh, so we are manufacturers of electric three-wheelers and also set up the ecosystem that is required for charging these at the customer's location. Uh, our customers mostly include people like Big Basket, Flipkart, IKEA, Amazon. Uh, so that's a specific segment that we have chosen because the profitability is already there. When you compare an electric vehicle to uh, the cost of uh, Uh, you need to look at the cost of operation the total cost of ownership and not just the initial cost of the vehicle so in terms of initial cost of the vehicle we are at least another 50% uh, more costly compared to an ic engine but when you uh, translate it translate that over a period of 4 years which is the life cycle of the vehicle um, then the cost of ownership is quite low So for a petrol powered vehicle it's about 5.5 rupees per kilometer but for an electric three wheeler right now it's at about uh, 2.8 rupees per kilometer so that's a significant savings uh it's half so total cost of ownership is almost half for an electric vehicle so what this includes is uh, the initial cost of the vehicle the maintenance cost over a period of 4 years uh, the operational cost over a period of 4 years Uh, we are at a point where electric vehicles are cheaper so if the question is um, uh, why aren't they widespread uh, the simple answer is convenience and performance of the electric vehicles so we have focused on high performance electric vehicles because most of the delivery guys uh, the timing is key so they want to deliver on time so our vehicles can travel up to 55 kilometers per hour speed compared to other e rickshaws which are 25 kilometers per hour speed So first thing is uh, the Indian mindset. Uh, they require acceleration of the vehicle compared to uh, the other models, which are mostly coming in from China or uh, other places. Uh, they would want performance, uh, speed, acceleration, timely delivery. So in terms of so those are the key aspects that are required to make people adapt electric vehicles. Uh, and uh, right now it's already economical. without subsidy to switch to electric for the freight segment uh, if uh, convenience can be provided in the passenger segment uh, which is what sun mobility and various other players are working at and i think even passenger segment uh, it will be uh, it will be in the next one year you should be at a price parity where people will start adopting electric vehicles there as well uh, i would like to ask mr goldy who is who is operating smarty in the last mile connectivity segment while we've been audience to news from the government fame one and then fame two and there's a lot of push there's a lot of media buzz in terms of push for the electric then what is that specific gap which still exists between government and private players to make that transition to electric actually happen one word for that procrastination why i say this fairly bluntly is because uh, you know smarty as india's first electric mobility company came into being in 2014 uh, this was a time when niti aayog was still not formed this was a time when fame was not there one of them this was a time when uh, the only reference to electric mobility was tesla it was the only global benchmark uh, and smarty came into being back then with a business model that worked even in absence of fame or government push so we have been a firm believer of the fact that uh, when people stop procrastinating and believe that a there is business sense uh, and b that there is tremendous amount of social good that needs to be done and by social good i don't mean uh, in a fancy uh, corporate social responsibility feel good but social good in a sense of really tackling the public health crisis that all our major cities in the country are facing these are the air pollution when you combine both of those two right uh, then in my mind there cannot be any excuse so you know 
from a smarty perspective uh, we are fairly pleased with whatever the central governments have done so far what the state government have done so far there are the steps in the right direction uh, our wish is that more and more players on both supply chain side on the demand aggregation side services side would uh, you know up their game and really take the space seriously uh, I want to invite insights from Tim here to understand from Open Motors that uh, how does a VC look at auto tech because it's a heavy capex. The gestation periods are quite long, right? Uh, unlike uh, a technology aggregator business where there's a clear path. So. How does a VC look like, and how does capital raising activity happen here? Because that's essential for for uh, growth and expansion. Hello, I'm Dean, founder and CEO of uh, Open Motors, coming from Silicon Valley. And actually, uh, that's a very interesting question. VCs are a little bit weird sometimes, especially in the valley. Yeah. And, but, you know, they are okay to uh, also burn a lot of money, okay? For example, um, I was recently at the micro-mobility conference, okay? There were all the top VCs that invested in these companies, like Bird, Lime, and also the CEOs of these companies were there. And we were talking about how they burned all the money, like hundreds of millions of US dollars, and they realized that they had a shitty asset, like an e-scooter that just lasts one month uh, with a very bad uh, total cost of ownership, TCO, okay? So basically they realized, we have an amazing service that is growing faster than Uber, and this is what VC is like, okay? When you see a growth of uh, user adoption, okay? That's their sweet spot. And they said, okay, we need to deploy a lot of these vehicles, okay, for a dollar per ride. And they bought it from my, actually I have a friend working there, it's called, um, anyway, they do it for, for Xiaomi as well. So all the e-scooters are manufactured basically from one company. And uh, yeah, anyway, they realized after that that was a very heavy capex, a very bad TCO decision to use this. Uh, they realized that this asset was basically a toy grade asset. Okay. So in the end, the this is I was surprised actually because they were very okay to have lost so many, to have burned so many money, so much money, and said, okay, we burned hundreds of millions, but we realized that people like it. You know this type of uh, scooters. The, the still growing very fast. So now the only thing that actually I think is related to mobility in general is we have to fix the, t the TCO. We have to optimize the TCO, which will fix automatically the business model. Okay. Yeah. So to fix the TCO, basically you have to engineer better the asset. Okay. Design and engineer better this. Okay. Because even cars, I mean the car, you know, four-wheelers, okay? We've been doing cars for Volkswagen, Maserati, super fancy, beautiful things, super performance. But in the end, it's all about perceived obsolescence and uh, planned obsolescence. We know that people will drive maximum two hours a day on average. Okay? We don't want to make cars that last longer because we want people to buy more cars. Actually, same thing for the e-scooters. They're using the same principle. And now services are using this with a completely different approach, okay? Usually 10 times more than a normal private usage. And so VCs are really into now uh, understanding what people want first. Second, it's okay to lose money is a big test, okay, for the first rounds. Whoever can fix the asset, then it might be the leader, so they, they bet on the teams, okay? Yeah. 
And, but I believe, actually, this is an interesting thing that the CapEx problem goes beyond investors. Okay? Uh, right now, in, my, in the four wheel space, we know that uh, Uber, Ola, Grab, Didi, all together combined, combined they need more several millions of cars that are engineered for services. And many companies are trying to do this. We are also trying to do it. Uh, but combining all these numbers together, multiplying for an average cost of the 10 or 15,000 US dollar per vehicle, it's a trillion dollar problem. Even SoftBank, Vision Fund, they don't have that money to support this CapEx, right? So these companies are trying to find different source of capitals, not only from VCs. Uh, you have introduced these new age vehicles to India. We never had these uh, the miracles, right? And neither did we have those goods. How, what business opportunities, how do you see that this segment is going to pan out? Or, till now we've been only used to uh, two-wheelers and three-wheelers. So people uh, who have been to China, they will not be surprised seeing a miracle. Because uh, China, if you go there, everyone is on small electric two sc scooters like that. The reason we went with that thesis, we thought that uh, just like my colleague said, that Uber, Ola, Grab, DD, they are looking for a new type of vehicle which is created for shared mobility. And we realized that problem early on where we were clear that our country will never need those standing scooters, the toys one for sure, not built for commercial grade. And those Activas and Hondas and Scooties, they probably also have their own set of challenges. They are not created for shared mobility. So we spent close to nine months uh, pregnancy period to figure out what is required for this country electric mobility to happen. And uh, we found uh, several interesting products, theories, frameworks, and finally liked the product which we rolled. And uh, you'll be very surprised that consumers are very happy to see that, to ride it. More than that, my ops team is also very happy that they're saying, okay, there's no maintenance. This is like practically nothing to be broken. And this is where I think the argument of DCO comes into picture, where we are not basically into a race of bringing a cool looking fancy vehicle, but also it should last long it should be easy to maintain and uh, our approach was actually driven from the fact that we'll bring one SKU and get the huge volume so that we get economies of scale in buying it and then post that repair maintenance supply chain of that is very expensive so we actually have been able to find a sweet spot so we're very happy about that and we think even in future probably that will be the template that will work for us. So it's a matter of time. People will say, yes, it is not awkward. In fact, nine out of 10 people, when they say miracle, they say, wow, this is cool. And this was one big risk we took as a company. What if people say that, hey, this is a toy or this is some old school stuff. So we did some interesting stuff on that. And I think it's a mindset change, you know, people probably will figure it out that this is most practical thing which makes EV mobility possible uh, in a practical manner. How do you ensure that you show a profitable business model because from, from what I know the current two wheelers are very low in the right share segment are, are, are probably very low on unutilization of the asset because probably of the nature and throw us some insights on how do you create a path to profitability in a, in a overcrowded two-wheeler segment. Right. So uh, I'm Pandunabhan, I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Vogo. Vogo is a 
टू व्हीलर शेड मोबिलिटी प्लेटफॉर्म विच इज़ ऑपरेटिंग आउट ऑफ बैंगलोर हैदराबाद एंड फ्यू मोर सिटीज़ इन कर्नाटका सो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग व्यूज शेयर बाई टिम एंड अमित एज वेल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ऑन टिम्स व्यूज यस इन्वेस्टर्स इन द वैली आई थिंक पुट अ लॉट ऑफ मनी एंड एंड सी वॉट हैपन्स बट आई थिंक इन इन इंडियन इन्वेस्टर्स आर नॉट दैट वेरी जनरस आई मीन इट वुड बीन ग्रेट इफ दे वै सो या सो आई मीन द ग्रोथ सो द काइंड ऑफ डिमांड दैट यू सी फॉर शेड मोबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट्स बीट एनी फॉर्म फैक्टर आई मीन वी गो टू द टी सी ओ लेटर बट बिफोर दैट द डिमांड दैट इज देयर इन द सिटी बिकॉज द सिटी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड द पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन एनी ऑफ द सिटीज इन इंडिया इज ब्रोकन राइट बी टीयर वन टीयर टू टीयर थ्री इट इज कम्प्लीटली ब्रोकन इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इफ यू थिंक अबाउट पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन देर इज अ बस Uh, which are plying in the cities and then there are metros that are com- that are coming up in the cities today and if you think about the price point of a bus or a metro it's at 2 3 rupees a kilometer right and if you think what is the next best option for a customer in 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 terms of not owning his vehicle is an auto which is upwards of 15 rupees a kilometer and then then oh, you know taxi is and cabs which are 20 rupees a kilometer so now between 3 rupees a kilometer and 15 rupees a kilometer there is a huge white space right and people need to commute and 70% of all trips in india are less than 10 kilometers right so these are all commute trips short trips so how do you how do you get people from point a to point b if essentially everything is broken right uh, so then people basically came and that's why two wheeler market exists in india i mean india sells 2 crore two wheelers a year uh, so that is exactly why the two wheeler market exists and the two wheeler kind of works out you know on their average usage you know 6 7 rupees a kilometer that's why people buy and they use but Do we need so many two wheelers in India? No, right? Like in the sense that Bangalore alone has 50 lakh registered two wheelers, right? 50 lakh registered two wheelers, and and Bangalore alone uh, in a day some 30, 35 lakh two wheelers ply in Bangalore transporting 35 lakh people. Uh, but 6,500 buses in Bangalore transport 55 lakh people, right? So I mean, you have congested the entire city. just because we did not have the right infrastructure in place between those price points and that is exactly what shared mobility is trying to solve beat any form factor could it be could be a two wheeler could be a you know a miracle could could be could be an auto you know an auto rickshaw whatever it is right so so i think the pent up demand in each and every um, uh, city in india is uh, very very high for this product uh, if you think about it india does 350 million trips in a day right that's the market size of uh, this business uh, the transportation business out of that ola and uber put together do 3 million trips that's just 1% of the market right so you i mean think about the problem and they they are billion dollar companies so but you are saying that the rest 342 million trips are still broken that's what we are trying to say right so that that is really the market size that you are actually trying to solve and that is why i think shared mobility is going to be a huge uh, driver of anything and everything in in a city in, in, in india right so so then having established that now we are we are wrong about okay what is the total cost of ownership uh, why aren't all of the business getting funded uh, what is the problem i mean like in the valley yes in india not so much right so i mean i think indian indian startups in general uh, like the valley has given a lot of return on investments for any startups uh, in in the valley right like every startup will be for facebook any anybody has uh, grown out but in indian startups have really not uh, attained that kind of uh, you know fame right like they've not converted so much in the, in the in the indian scenario so india has more time right india needs more time startups needs more time given how the how we are as a country Right. so having said that so the money is also very hard to come by i mean otherwise we would have had 15 20 30 40 shared mobility companies funded today because given the size of the market and the opportunity that is available uh, that is supposed to have happened so i think that is one of the reasons and indian investors for, for like i i know this because i've tried raising money we've raised two three rounds of money to, uh, to now uh, and typically the indian investors are very very uh, smart they real, realize that it is an asset based business uh they know that if the asset were to give away the business goes kaput and there is nothing that anybody can do as he said uh you need trillions of dollars to solve the problem and even softbank vision fund might not have that money right so so indian investors do really realize very very clearly that asset based businesses uh 
if the asset is not sturdy enough then the business does not make sense right so that is where they start the entire conversation from so i think uh, that is re- that is really the reason why you don't see a lot of startups getting uh, you know funded very easily because the asset question in itself is a big large question to answer and then asset questions are not answered uh, over a meeting or in a day right it it is answered over a period of time it is answered in a year it is answered in two years it's answered in three years right because the asset will sweat it out and then prove for itself at scale that it lasts or not right so is uh, we need a strong sturdy product and a good supply chain support so that mobility uh, shared mobility connected mobility can be can be let's call it successful right i want to invite akash to to get insight from you how are you approaching this entire uh, i'm sure you are also exposed to similar problems uh, or challenges for the lack of a better word Thank you, everyone. I'm Akash. I'm the co-founder CEO of MobiC. Yeah, so very interesting, uh, you know, discussion so far. See, one thing we have to realize uh, that electric mobility, that what we are talking about, it's happening in India. You know, it's 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 a new age industry. It's a generational leap that we are all taking, right? Even government is pushing over the next three years that the entire fleet. of two wheelers at least should be electric so it's a big generational leap that we are talking about and we being startups obviously we are the ones who are solving problems that's why there's a startup so and the beauty is that while this china which is a little ahead of us but most of the rest of the world is moving electric as india is moving electric right so so yes there are problem of of hardware yes there's problem of software yes there's problem of battery swapping charging we don't know the answers yet there's uh, uh, you know uh, there's a lot of government support or subsidies or policies that are all claimed for uh, but but yesterday i was having a similar discussion where when we try to pinpoint that what is it that we need right now nobody had a clear answer that we need this today because everything is in motion somewhere or the other i think there are more such forums happening on electric mobility called by government you know where where the transport minister of a state or city is calling all the you know stakeholders in a meeting or mr amitabh khan from niti aayog calling all the stakeholders that we need to go electric what do you guys need so so and they are taking notes they are creating whatsapp groups you know that what are the things that are needed for us to go electric so so there's intent and there's definitely a lot of you know uh, questions been thrown at different levels but if you ask me since it's a moving wheel and we are on that wheel so we we are solving the problems because we need to move in that direction and we cannot leave that you know bus right now if we sit down and then take two years and then create the best of vehicles we don't have that liberty because because otherwise we'll be you know left behind So yes uh, it's it's interesting space where we are in and which is which is all exciting that country has a challenge to move electric and why electric because as uh, Paddy rightly said that you know there are uh, you know so many trips happening 300 million trips out of them uh, I would contextualize to our last mile problem so there is you know uh, 150 million trips which are uh, you know less than 4 km so about 50% of those trips are less than 4 km and these are metro to office office to home delivery folks do that you know the food delivery guys and all of that how can we convert these trips which are half of the trips which are happening into electric possibly and if we are able to do that at least there's there'll be less a congestion which is definitely needed the aqi levels are 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 where you know these are hazardous you know in in other countries it would be a red alert but we are indians we are legends i mean we have tendency to you know uh, recuperate in each and every form or factor but yes that is why electric is needed that if we don't do it today then tomorrow is going to be really difficult from a survival standpoint right so so that's that's my two cents on this that we need to go electric we need to do it in the shared way because that works makes business sense and that's what customers also need we've seen that how olas and ubers people have moved from car ownership to you know uh, the the right share or you know shared mobility so yeah exciting times and uh, hope hopes are all you know uh, happening here